I, a 25-year-old woman, recently married Noah, my boyfriend and fiancé of almost seven years. Noah is also 25. Although our relationship has been filled with love, one person tried to ruin our happiness. My stepsister, Charlotte, who is now 24. Charlotte and I have known each other for years. Our parents started dating when I was six and she was five, and they eventually got married when I was nine, since both of us were close in age. I initially thought of her as a sister and a friend, but things took a sharp turn when Noah came into our lives. Our childhoods had challenges. My mother married Charlotte's father after my own father walked out of our lives. My father had cheated on my mother when she was pregnant, and after he was caught, he abandoned us, signed away his parental rights, and left with his new girlfriend. I've never met him, and my mother decided not to pursue child support since my grandparents were financially well-off, and she wanted to cut all ties with him. Charlotte's mother, on the other hand, had passed away when Charlotte was very young due to severe health complications. Her pregnancy had worsened her condition, and sadly, she did not survive. So, when our parents started dating, we both had single parents who were trying to build a new life together. Since Charlotte's father had full custody of her, and my mother had full custody of me, we ended up spending all of our time together when our parents moved in with each other. I didn't have many kids in my neighborhood to play with, so whenever Charlotte came over, I was thrilled. She was close to my age, and having a constant companion felt like a dream. For years, we got along well, spending time together, playing, and becoming good friends. However, things started to change once we reached high school. Even though Charlotte is a year younger than me, she had started school early, so we ended up in the same grade. We shared many classes, and in our first year of high school, we met Noah. His family had just moved to our town, and since he was new to the school, the three of us quickly became friends. I developed feelings for Noah almost immediately. He was kind, funny, and everything I wanted in a partner. Unfortunately, Charlotte seemed to feel the same way about him. Not wanting to let a boy come between us, I decided to talk to Charlotte about the situation. We agreed that neither of us would pursue Noah out of respect for each other and our friendship. At the time, it felt like a mature decision. We were just teenagers with a crush on the same guy. How hard could it be to move on? However, things didn't go the way I expected. Since Noah was in many of our classes, the three of us spent a lot of time together, and as I got to know him better, my feelings for him grew stronger. I tried to stick to the agreement I had made with Charlotte and kept things strictly friendly with him, even though Noah often flirted with me. I never flirted back because I didn't want to betray Charlotte. We avoided talking about Noah at home, as both of us knew how sensitive the topic was. I thought we were on the same page about keeping things platonic with him until our senior year. Around prom season, everything came crashing down. One day, I was considering saying yes to another boy who had asked me to prom. However, before I could make a decision, Noah approached me and confessed something that completely blindsided me. He told me that Charlotte had asked him to go to prom with her, and not only that, but she had also confessed her feelings for him and said she wanted to be more than just friends. I was shocked and deeply hurt. After everything we had promised each other, Charlotte had gone behind my back and made him move on Noah. I couldn't believe that she would do something like that, knowing how much I liked him. What hurt even more was Noah's revelation that Charlotte had been flirting with him for years. According to him, she had always acted differently around him when they were alone, and he had sensed her interest from the start. But Noah had never reciprocated her feelings, because the person he liked all along was me. He explained that he had been trying to flirt with me for years, hoping I would show some interest in return, but I had always kept my distance because of my promise to Charlotte. Now that high school was ending and we were all about to go off to college, he needed clarity. He told me that if I didn't feel the same way about him, he would move on and start thinking about asking someone else to prom. But if I did have feelings for him, he wanted to know because he wanted to be with me. That day left me feeling disoriented and overwhelmed. Not only had Noah confessed that he liked me, but I had also learned that Charlotte had been trying to pursue him all along. 
I felt betrayed by her actions, and I knew I couldn't make any decisions about Noah until I confronted her. I left school early that day, unable to face Charlotte on the walk home. I needed time to process everything. When I got home, I waited for her to return, and when she finally arrived, she acted as if nothing had happened. She was casual and cheerful, not mentioning Noah or the fact that she had asked him to prom. Her behavior made me feel even worse, as if our friendship and the promises we made to each other meant nothing to her. The next day, I decided to tell Noah how I felt. I confessed that I liked him too, and we started dating. Charlotte was furious when she found out, and things between us were never the same after that. Although I hoped she would eventually come around, she remained bitter about the situation for years. Fast forward to the present. Noah and I got engaged and began planning our wedding. Charlotte was invited, along with the rest of our family, and I hoped she would be happy for us, despite everything that had happened in the past. However, just days before the wedding, Charlotte tried to sabotage it. She pulled me aside and claimed that Noah had confessed to her that he didn't really want to marry me. According to her, he was still in love with her and wanted to run away with her instead. At that moment, I realized she hadn't changed at all. She was still trying to manipulate the situation for her own benefit. But I wasn't going to let her ruin my wedding. Instead of confronting Noah or falling for her lies, I decided to call her husband and tell him what she had said. He was furious when he found out and demanded an explanation from Charlotte. Their marriage ultimately ended in divorce, and she blamed me for it. Despite the chaos she caused, my wedding went off without a hitch, and I married the love of my life. I'm happy with my decision to expose Charlotte's lies and protect my relationship with Noah. Some might say it was harsh, but after everything she had done, I believe it was the only way to ensure that she couldn't hurt me or Noah ever again. It all started when I decided I needed to confront Charlotte about something I had heard. Rumors were going around that she had asked Noah to prom and even confessed her feelings for him. This came as a shock to me because she had previously made a promise. Neither of us would make any moves on Noah. In fact, she had insisted I promise not to act on my feelings for him, so I had kept my distance from him for her sake. But now, it seemed like she hadn't kept her side of the deal at all. I couldn't keep it bottled up any longer, so I confronted her. When I asked her directly about what I'd heard, Charlotte immediately became defensive. She said it wasn't any of my business because it was between her and Noah. That infuriated me because it was my business. She had made me suppress my own feelings for him while she took every opportunity to pursue him. I had sacrificed a lot to respect her wishes, despite knowing deep down that my feelings for Noah were more than just a passing crush. I was already in love with him by then, and ignoring his advances had been incredibly hard. But I did it because I wanted to protect my friendship with Charlotte. Now, to discover that she had broken her promise and disregarded my feelings entirely felt like the ultimate betrayal. During the argument, Charlotte let slip that she only made that promise because she assumed that if Noah ever had to choose, he would obviously pick her over me. The arrogance of that statement left me stunned. It made me realize that she had never truly considered my feelings at all, and I was done sacrificing my happiness for someone who would never do the same for me. In that moment, I decided that I would no longer hold back. I was going to tell Noah how I felt. The next day, I sat down with Noah and told him everything. I didn't hold anything back. I told him about the agreement Charlotte and I had made, the way she had broken it, and the argument we had the day before. Noah listened calmly and told me that he understood how complicated the situation was. He even said he was willing to wait for me if I needed more time to sort through my feelings. But I realized I didn't need more time. I was in love with Noah, and I didn't want to hide it anymore. We started dating that very day. Ending things with Charlotte was inevitable. She and I stopped speaking entirely after that fight. For Noah, cutting her off was simple. But for me... It was more complicated because we lived together and even shared a room. After the argument, and once Noah and I began dating, Charlotte moved her things into the basement so she could have her own space, which was a relief for me. 
Our parents noticed the sudden distance between us and asked what had happened, but neither of us ever told them the truth. We just quietly stopped being friends. At first, it was difficult living under the same roof in silence. But over time, we got used to it. Noah and I continued seeing each other and went to the same college, while Charlotte chose a school across the country. The distance made it easier. We only saw each other during holidays, and even then, we barely exchanged more than a few words. After college, life moved on. Noah and I were still happily together, and Charlotte began dating a guy she had met at her school. The whole ordeal from high school started to feel like something from a petty drama, something that didn't matter anymore. At family gatherings, Charlotte and I gradually became more civil with each other. We exchanged greetings and small talk, but it was clear that we would never go back to being the close friends we once were. Last year, Charlotte announced her engagement to the guy she had been dating from college. I congratulated her formally, and she responded by inviting me to her wedding. It felt bittersweet. When we were younger, we used to play pretend weddings and always imagine being each other's maid of honor. Now, I was just another guest. Still, I was relieved that we had at least reached a point where we could be polite to each other. I decided not to bring Noah to her wedding as my plus one, thinking it would be awkward, even though she seemed to have moved on. But when we spoke at her reception, Charlotte surprised me by saying I could have brought Noah along. She told me it was all in the past, and she no longer cared. I thought that meant she had finally let everything go. I was wrong. About eight months ago, Noah proposed to me, and I said yes without hesitation. It felt like perfect timing. He had just been promoted at work, and I had recently joined a startup with a friend. I was excited to plan a wedding without any drama, and despite everything that had happened in the past, I decided to invite Charlotte. She accepted the invitation without any hesitation, and I thought everything would go smoothly. On the day of the wedding, Charlotte and her husband arrived later than expected. They were supposed to check into the hotel the day before, but they showed up on the wedding day itself. It threw us off, but they claimed it was an honest mistake. Since the hotel still had available rooms, we let it slide and tried not to overthink it. I genuinely believed there was no malicious intent behind their late arrival. But I had no idea what Charlotte was planning. On the morning of the wedding, while I was getting my makeup done, I noticed Charlotte lingering outside my room. It seemed odd, especially since guests were free to enjoy themselves around the hotel until the ceremony. Most of them were either relaxing in their rooms or having fun elsewhere, but Charlotte was hanging around near my door. Since she wasn't a bridesmaid or family member helping me get ready, her behavior stood out as strange. After I finished getting ready, my bridesmaids and mom went to their rooms to change and get their makeup done. We had about an hour before the ceremony, so I decided to take a short walk down the hallway to calm my nerves. I didn't want to stray too far, just enough to gather my thoughts before walking down the aisle. And that's when things began to make sense. I didn't want anyone to see me in my wedding dress, but just as I was leaving my room, I was caught off guard by Charlotte. She pulled me aside, saying she needed to talk to me about something important. It was strange because, while we had been on speaking terms, we had never shared personal or intimate conversations. Out of curiosity, I decided to listen to what she had to say, though I had no idea what could be so urgent right before my wedding. Charlotte began by telling me that she had arrived at the hotel a day earlier than planned, on purpose, not by accident. She claimed that Noah, my fiancé, had asked her to arrive early. At first, I was confused, wondering why Noah would make such a request. Then, she dropped the bombshell. According to her, Noah had asked her to come early because he wanted to elope with her. She said he had reached out two weeks before the wedding, confessing that he was having second thoughts. He allegedly told her that he wasn't in love with me anymore, even though it had taken him a long time to realize it, and that he had instead fallen for her. Charlotte claimed that Noah and she had been in contact behind my back for quite some time, though she insisted their relationship had remained platonic, at least until now. However, Noah supposedly confessed his love for her and pressured her to agree to his reckless plan to run away together. 
She claimed that Noah was too afraid to speak to me directly, worried that I might react badly or do something irrational, and he didn't want to be responsible for it. According to Charlotte, he didn't even want to be near me when it happened. She framed all of this as though she was doing me a favor by telling me now, as if she were concerned about my well-being and my relationship with Noah. But it was clear to me that her story was a complete fabrication. I knew Noah well enough to recognize that none of what she said was remotely believable. He was not the kind of person to go behind my back or run away from problems. If he had doubts or concerns, he would tell me directly. He wasn't a coward, and neither was I. Everything about Charlotte's story felt off. It was obvious that Charlotte was trying to stir up drama on the most important day of my life. I could see right through her attempt to sabotage my wedding. But instead of confronting her directly, I decided to turn the tables on her. I didn't have her husband's phone number, but I followed him on Instagram. So I called him through the app, pretending to be devastated. Since I stood right in front of Charlotte while on the phone, she couldn't see what I was doing. She probably assumed I was calling Noah to confront him or break off the engagement. Exactly what she wanted. Her assumption worked in my favor because she didn't stop me. But she was in for a surprise. When her husband answered the call, I calmly repeated everything Charlotte had just told me. I asked if it was true, still pretending to be heartbroken, and Charlotte stayed silent, assuming I was speaking to Noah. She likely believed that her plan was working and that I was falling for her lies. After I finished explaining the situation to her husband, I put the phone on speaker so Charlotte could hear his response. Her husband's reaction was immediate. He was stunned and furious. He told me he would return to his room right away. The moment Charlotte realized I was talking to her husband and not Noah, she completely lost her composure. She started yelling at me, accusing me of deliberately trying to ruin her marriage. I calmly told her that I was only doing to her what she had tried to do to me and walked back into my room, leaving her standing there in a panic. Once inside, I explained everything to my bridesmaids and asked them to make sure Charlotte stayed away from the wedding ceremony. I didn't trust her, and I wanted her out of the event. But to my relief, the ceremony went off without a hitch. Charlotte never showed up, likely too preoccupied with trying to fix things with her husband after the stunt she had pulled. After the wedding, no one even noticed Charlotte's absence, except for our parents, who asked where she was. I brushed off their questions, saying I'd tell them later, though I had no intention of going into detail. I didn't want to waste time explaining Charlotte's nonsense. All I wanted was to enjoy being a newlywed without any unnecessary drama. Later, I called the hotel management to check on Charlotte's room and was pleased to learn that she had checked out during the wedding. That was the last I heard about her until a week later. Two days ago, we found out from our parents that Charlotte and her husband were separating. Apparently, her husband had called my parents in a fit of rage, telling them how terrible Charlotte was and demanding that they come and take her away from his house. He threatened to call the police if she didn't leave. It turned out that Charlotte's husband had heard everything during my call and had had enough. He had also grown increasingly frustrated over time because Charlotte's friends had been telling her that she should have ended up with Noah, which only fueled her obsession. Realizing how deeply Charlotte still harbored feelings for Noah and that she had even tried to ruin my wedding was the final straw for him. In the end, Charlotte's attempt to sabotage my wedding backfired spectacularly. Instead of ruining my day, she destroyed her own marriage. And as for Noah and me, we had a good laugh about the whole situation and happily moved forward with our new life together. Despite everything, Charlotte was in love with someone else, and no amount of pretending could change that. Her husband, too, had come to terms with this harsh reality, and now they were moving toward a divorce. Somehow, though... My parents had decided that this entire situation was my fault, and they were blaming me for it. They believe I should have kept my distance from Charlotte's marriage and stayed out of her relationship, especially since, in their view, my involvement was what ruined things. They insist that by contacting her husband, I crossed a line and ultimately destroyed their marriage. Now, they expect me to apologize to Charlotte, but I've refused, and because of that, 
My parents won't speak to me. Honestly, I, I don't understand why they think this is my fault. I never asked Charlotte to behave in such a destructive way, and I certainly didn't force her to betray her own marriage. All I did was retaliate when she attacked me first. Charlotte tried to ruin my wedding and hurt me intentionally, so I hit back where I knew it would hurt her most. To me, it's unfair for anyone to blame me for what followed. Her marriage crumbled because of her own actions, not mine. Noah feels the same way, which gives me some peace, but my parents and several mutual friends seem firmly on Charlotte's side, and it's driving me crazy. I can't wrap my head around how they've managed to twist things so badly that I've become the villain in all this. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who commented on my initial post. Your kind words and validation helped me see how unfairly my parents and friends were treating me. Knowing I wasn't in the wrong made it clear that I couldn't let them continue to manipulate me into believing I was. So, I've decided to cut ties with them, at least for now. If I don't put some distance between us, I'm afraid they'll keep blaming me and making me feel like I'm responsible for Charlotte's choices. And over time, that pressure could wear me down. I don't want to break down and apologize to Charlotte just to keep the peace. So it's best if I step away from all of them. Honestly, my parents refusing to talk to me because I wouldn't apologize to Charlotte is what pushed me to this point. Now, they're getting exactly what they wanted. I'm not talking to them either. If my so-called friends are going to side with Charlotte and treat me like the villain, they're welcome to do so. It only made me realize they were never true friends. Everyone knows Charlotte was the one at fault. In reality, she owes me an apology, not the other way around. But if people want to ignore the truth, that's on them. I've decided not to waste any more energy trying to change their minds. At this point, the only thing that matters to me is spending time with Noah. Noah and I are on our honeymoon now, and it's been two weeks since the wedding. I'm still not speaking to my parents, and I've cut off the friends who sided with Charlotte. Honestly, losing those friends doesn't hurt as much as I thought it would. I was never that close to them, so their absence isn't a huge loss. But not talking to my parents, that stings. There are moments when I instinctively reach for my phone to text my mom or think about calling my stepdad just to have a light, fun conversation like we used to. But then I remember that I can't. They chose to take Charlotte's side, and that betrayal hurts deeply. To make things worse, Charlotte is living with them now, likely spreading more lies about me to make them hate me even more. I'm almost certain that by the time I get back, my parents will be entirely against me. I can understand my stepdad wanting to support Charlotte since she's his daughter, but I can't wrap my head around why my mom is siding with her. She knows what betrayal feels like. My dad cheated on her with one of her friends and abandoned us for that woman. Charlotte tried to do the exact same thing to me by coming after Noah, yet my mother doesn't seem to see the parallels. I thought, if anyone, my mom would understand why I was angry and why I acted the way I did. But if she can't and she still sees me as the villain, there's nothing more I can say. For now, though, I'm focusing on enjoying this honeymoon with Noah. I want to be fully present with him and make the most of this time together, hoping it helps me move past the hurt I'm feeling. On the third day of our honeymoon, I received a message from my mother, but I have decided not to open it until we return home. I don't want anything to ruin this experience with Noah. If the message turns out to be negative, I'd rather deal with that disappointment later, once the honeymoon is over. I know it might sound strange, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I want to savor without distractions or heartache. We're back home now, and the first thing I did after landing was read my mother's message. She told me that they had initially allowed Charlotte to stay with them for a few days, hoping to support her during the divorce. However, things quickly got out of hand. Charlotte spent every moment bad-mouthing me, and eventually my parents had enough. They realized that her actions were intentional. She had tried to ruin my wedding out of spite. After seeing her true colors, my parents decided to kick her out of the house. They apologized in the message, explaining that they were overwhelmed by the situation at the time. Charlotte's divorce had seemed like a bigger crisis to them, and they didn't know how to handle her emotions, 
which led them to make poor decisions. Now that they've seen things more clearly, they want to make amends and invited Noah and me to dinner this weekend to reconcile. I can't even describe how relieved I am. Noah and I have already agreed to go, and I'm hopeful this will repair our relationship. It feels like the worst of the situation is finally behind me. I just hope we never have to go through anything like this again.